This is a Dutch junction design. Or at least, it's pretty similar to many junctions that you'll find throughout the Netherlands that have to deal with cars, cyclists and pedestrians in pretty large volumes and in a safe and equal way. And it's something that I really wanted to make in City Skylines for, I would say, about two pretty big reasons. One of them is just pretty um, personal. Since I'm Dutch myself and I might have too much of a thing for infrastructure in general and I actually like to take my bike wherever I go almost every day. Another reason is kind of because this is something that hasn't really been done so often in City Skylines yet and it's something that I wanted to try from a gameplay perspective and maybe to try and spread the idea of Dutch intersections a little bit and uh, why I really like the philosophy behind it. And maybe that's because I'm Dutch, maybe it's because I'm such a cycling fan or maybe it's just because I think it's really interesting material to think about in terms of city planning. It's definitely not perfect but I try to get as much of the philosophy in there while also trying to make a good looking intersection. Only thing uh, that you shouldn't pay too much attention to is the buses. I know that they do that thing where they kind of fly around and go into the ground. I'm not entirely sure how to fix that. I tried many things but nothing really worked. But in any case, I'll try to explain it more as we get into the time lapse and I'll show you how it's all done. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so starting off, I'm laying the foundation for the actual functioning core of this interchange. I think the usual common practice for city skylines is to just build your interchanges out of the roads that you get. Maybe mod the roads a little bit and add some assets to it, but not really make them fundamentally different. And what I was really happy about with Mass Transit is the new addition of the roads color changer mod, which actually allows you to remove the markings on your highway. And if you combine this with ploppable asphalt and the move it mods and all kinds of asset mods to spice things up a little bit, I think you can actually make a core functioning sort of underground programming for the cars so that your uh, junction is actually going to be functioning and then just make that all invisible and build the entire look of the junction just out of assets. Uh, so I really just used these highway pieces because that allows me to change their color um, and also remove all of the markings as the background of where the cars are going to go. Um, but the rest is really just going to fill, be filled quite a bit by Plopopo Asphalt and um, really just be made using custom lines and assets just to get the exact Dutch look. It's also a bit of a, a bit of a, I guess, a solution to the problem that City Skylines has inherently, where you don't get more lanes to split off uh, for traffic lights, which is very unfortunate. It's one of the things that I is, is really one of my biggest gripes about the traffic system in game. So that kind of helps as well, but it also just means that, you know, whatever kind of details I add to the junction to add that sort of Dutch flair to it, the cars are still going to use this junction. Only problem is some of the nodes are so close together. And even though I managed to fix the Z fighting with the Plopopo asphalt pieces, the cars simply just don't really understand what's going on here. And there's a similar case for the uh, arrows because I can't remove some of the arrows and I also can't change their directions, which is which is a pretty big problem. It's not a very big problem. I was able to remove most of them, um, but some are still pointing in different directions than their part of the road is going. So that's quite unfortunate. You'll notice, for instance, that the top left and uh, bottom right uh, arrows here are uh, pointing in weird other directions. Um, but yeah, to get to the actual junction itself, because there's there's a lot of introduction that I want to talk about here. Um, the general idea for the junction is quite simple, but it's it's based on a very famous video, even at this point, which is from the view from the cyclepath.com blog, which is a really cool blog about cycling infrastructure. And they made a video about Dutch junkling, uh, <laughs> Dutch junction design in a cycle friendly way. I'll post that in the description. And it has about 400,000 views and quite a bit more. And uh, it's quite a well-known, if not the most well-known example of Dutch junction design, if not for the fact that it's not entirely Dutch. The problem with the video is that it has been understood quite a bit, or misunderstood quite a bit, and um, also been applied in some wrong ways. It's not really a guide as to how to make a Dutch junction, but it's um, apparently from the creators of the blog itself, 
taken out of context since it's really just an idea on the philosophies behind Dutch junction design and a way to turn a standard US junction into something that is more like the Dutch protected uh, junction design, which is a lot better for cyclists. That said, the entire design of that junction, including the very idea of having traffic lights and protected islands in the middle of the traffic junction, is something that's very old-fashioned in the Netherlands right now. That's not to say that it doesn't exist anymore, it's just not that common, and many of these kinds of interchanges are right now being removed to be replaced by roundabouts, which handle more volume than a regular intersection, and um, they're also just more safe. So that's one thing to note about this intersection, I just really wanted to try something like this and do it a little bit different than that video, still applying some of the basic philosophies that make it a Dutch design, which I'll get into in a bit, but at the same time widening it up a little bit, because that video, even though it makes some great points, and I think it explains really well what makes the Dutch design work, but it's, it's all in a very tight space, and if you just look at the look of the junction, I don't think that's where the Dutchness of it comes at all, it's really in how it functions. So, let's get into the nitty gritty details then. Um, in the middle, we just have a somewhat standard uh, junction. You can just make right turns with uh, those separate turns. Uh, you can go straight pretty easily, and if you want to make a left-hand turn, uh, you just kind of cross the middle of the junction, just like that. Uh, we've got a slightly less busy road going horizontal here, and a slightly more busy road going vertical, as you can see by the fact that I added two extra lanes on the vertical one on each side. And um, then comes the important bit, and that is the cycle lanes, or the bike lanes, around the entire thing. And this is really where the Dutchness comes in, and where the importance of it comes in. The uh, crosswalks, or I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you call it for bicycles, I mean you don't really walk there, but anyway, uh, the crossings for, for cyclists are quite a bit far from the, uh, the center of the intersection, which actually works, in a way. Um, since it means that cars stopping at the traffic lights, which are a little bit ahead of the interchange, can see the cyclists ahead. Um, and what's especially important, and this is one thing that distinguishes it from the standard design presented in the video, is that the cycle lanes are very well separated from the roads. And this is something which is really quite crucial. Even even if the, the cycle lanes are pretty close to the roads, you often find that there is some kind of physical barrier between the two. There's a slightly raised pavement between the two, or uh, what, what's also very common is really to have some uh, shrubbery or other kinds of foliage parks between the road and the bike lanes, which is an extra method of adding some safety to it, and that's something which this has as well. It also has the advantage of making the turns which you take as a cyclist very wide so even though you can't make a left hand turn instantly as you see you have to first go straight and then um, take the left hand turn so you have to cross a road twice it does mean that there are way less conflict points over there there are way less places where you could potentially bump into a car um, and you can keep your speed pretty well on it as well since it's quite round and curvy you have to do a little swish to the right if you want to make a left hand turn but it's it's really not that bad and <laughs> as a cyclist myself it's one thing i really hate is intersections where they're so tight that you really have to slow down especially after a bridge or something where you're just making some awesome speed anyway that's totally beside the point those are basically the ways to hopefully make this a slightly better intersection for cyclists not only in saving time allowing more volume but also in making it safer now just along the sides of that, you can see the zebra stripes for the regular pedestrian crossings and that just about makes the entire uh, design of the interchange. And it's, it's quite a wide design, especially since everything is so separated, even the different kinds of roads are separated, you'll see here. So you also have these little islands for the pedestrians, for instance, to cross and uh, to look once again for any un incoming cars so that you never have to worry about cars coming from the left and the right at the same time. And um, yeah, that's really the uh, simple design behind the junction itself. One thing that I do, I do want to note though, is the fact that I added trees on the islands, which is something uh, which is unheard of. Or at least it's not unheard of, it happens, but uh, if they are there at all, 
they should be smaller um, with the core rule of not breaking the line of sight too much with. These trees, I, th I think they do break the line of sight too much. They're just too bulky and they start having leaves too close to the ground. Only problem is I liked the look of them too much, so I kind of went with form over function there. So yeah, that's technically uh, one big flaw of this junction. That aside, um, trying to get the crossings in in a realistic way. You also see that they uh, do have separate traffic lights. So um, as a cyclist, you'll really only be stopping directly next to the road there, and you'll be quite a few meters ahead of the cars that have to stop nearby, which is also very handy. Now, I know that I said that, you know, this, this design is a bit outdated now, which it technically is, but it still is used quite a bit. I based this mostly off of examples in um, Horle, Turnhoutselan, which is very far away from me, but also some closer examples to me uh, in the center of Barendrecht and Havestraat in Riddekerk. Shout out to anybody who knows these places, but um, basically there are still similar designs that you see in the Netherlands because it's still out there. It just happens to be that, you know, uh, there are some newer, better designs uh, which you can build in the, sa in the same space to allow for the same or better volumes and in a safer way. I just really thought this would be an interesting uh, intersection to talk more about Dutch intersection design and um, why I think the uh, Dutch intersection design works quite well. And yeah, it's really also just based on some real life intersections. Now I wanted to build some quick houses over here as well. Not really because I'm going to build an entire Dutch city or anything like that. That would be quite a bit of effort. Um, but because this kind of gives a bit of context to the interchange. One thing that I would say about this interchange is that it's, it's more of an inter or an inner city interchange, if you will. Uh, since it has the uh, bike lanes around all of the sides. So naturally you'd also think that you'd want to uh, bike around all of the sides. These are also one-way bike lanes. One of my biggest gripes with these with this game has always been that it only has two-way bike lanes and bike lanes in the Netherlands are more commonly one-way bike lanes on either side of the road. Um, but yeah, because of that it's, it's more of like inner city sort of design. If you're more outside of the city you'd usually just find uh, a two-way uh, bike lane a bit further away from the road. But over here I think it works to just add this very small residential area which looks a bit Dutch. Also something that I should note about this, uh, which is quite interesting. I remember I've talked about this a long time ago in the first episode of my uh, Dutch city series. Um, but what's also quite interesting about this is there are all kinds of traffic regulations and rules and guidelines in the Netherlands as per usual per country. Um, but one that is quite important and quite rigorously followed in the Netherlands is that of three different types of roads. I don't know any of the English translations for this, but you've basically got roads that are meant as long distance transport. Uh, things like highways and uh, more like provincial, provincial kind of highways, things like that. Um, then you've got like more transport roads, which can just be in the middle of the city and you'll have cycle lanes around the sides and such, but there won't be any houses right next to those types of roads. That's basically the type of road that this interchange uh, meets at four different places. Um, but then there's also the last type of road, and this is often a brick road instead of asphalt, and is often even shared space. It has much lower volumes, and it's really only meant for local traffic. Hell, they'll usually be built in such a way that you can't actually use them to get across town and they'll just be built in some labyrinth of ways with only a few entries into each neighborhood so that uh, car volumes are minimized right next to houses which is quite cool but um that type of road is basically the, the brick type of road that i wanted to use for the small residential neighborhood over there just to see how it would you know kind of look next to the interchange which we're building here now since i also wanted to add a little bit of context to the interchange and not just build the intersection, should be, uh, itself. I also wanted to add some nature around it. One of those things was actually making a small ditch because you see those everywhere in the Netherlands. And that's something that I was never really able to do until recently we actually got an amazing asset uh, in the shape of um, some water, which you can place in a small ditch to actually make it look like a small Dutch landscape, which is quite nice. 
I'm sorry that I don't know any of the creators of the mods. I'll post a link in the description though to my new Dutch asset series, which is a collection that I still maintain on Steam for some kind of new Dutch series in uh, City Skylines. Don't, don't have your hopes up though, because I'm not planning any of the sorts. I've just been keeping that list for over a year. Maybe one day it happens, but it's an updated list with many of the assets which I used in here as well. And if you're wondering how to sort of create this intersection, um, there are a couple of very important mods and assets that I should definitely note. One of them is, of course, the road colors changer, since it allows you to use highways the way I did. Uh, another one is um, the smooth and uh, regular faded lines, which I don't know who made them. Actually, I'm going to look that up right now. But yeah, those are the lines that I used to draw much of the interchange. Intersection. There. Um, and um, what's also very important is move it. You absolutely have to have move it to move things around in any good way. And I think that's really one of the, the most crucial things, especially in this build. Another one that was quite funny, and this is going to be <laughs> exceptionally hard to actually find. Uh, oh, there we go. The, uh, the smooth lines were by Moog with a copyright sign. But yeah, that will be down in the description as well. But another thing which was quite important here was um, sharp junction angles to be able to do the things which I do with the roads at all and have anarchy to put things over each other. The prop line tool to actually have lines of, um, well, basically all the lines that I draw. And um, that's really some of the most important stuff. There's also ploppable asphalt to fill everything up and some curb assets, but I've got all kinds of curb assets and they'll all more or less work. There's quite a bit of that stuff on the workshop as well. I think the smooth lines are especially important though, since it allows you to uh, draw your own things. So for example, the shark teeth, as we call it, which are the give way markings in the Netherlands, are um, lines that you don't really have in the game. So you need to make those yourself. And the same kind of goes for all of these different uh, white fields in the middle of the interchange intersection, damn it, uh, as well. So yeah, those are really some of the most important things. I know this isn't really that much of a tutorial. I don't think you should take it as one though. I think this should hopefully, at least I think that would be amazing, uh, be some kind of inspiration as to what you can do in this game, especially with some of the new mods and all of the assets that we have nowadays. You can really transform the intersections and everything in this game beyond recognition. And that's what, one of the things I love most about this game. Anyway, that's just about it for the time lapse. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you maybe learned something from this, got some inspiration, um, got some ideas on how in general Dutch street design is, and uh, maybe we'll see this kind of design be a little bit more common in the City Skylines community. I'll probably mess with this a little bit more. I hope to build some kind of roundabout sometime soon and experiment a bit more with this kind of stuff, but for now this has really just been a quick one-off that I wanted to do for fun and because it's something that I really wanted to test. So yeah. Thank you guys again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.